Do you like tequila but not entirely sure how it's made? Keep watching because today you'll find out on Let's Talk Drinks. Hi guys, welcome back. So a little while ago I made a video that was the history of tequila and the link to that video is at the end of this video so stay tuned, keep watching. So today I'm going to go through the seven steps of making tequila. And true tequila has to be made from the blue Weber agave, which is a succulent plant found in Mexico. So the production of tequila is divided into seven steps. Harvesting, cooking, extraction, fermentation, distillation, aging, and bottling. Step one, harvesting. Planting, tending, and harvesting the agave plant uses a lot of manual work. And gaining experience to be an alhimador, which is the person that works with the agaves, is normally passed down from generation to generation. The plants are grown for six to 10 years before they are ripe and able to be harvested. They grow from 1.2 to 1.8 meters high. Once they are ready, the himador removes the spiky, very pointy leaves of the agave with a tool that's sharpened called a coa. Only the heart or piña is used to make tequila and mature piñas can weigh anywhere from 40 to 90 kilograms. However, it's not the size of the piña that's so important. It's the amount of sugar content and starch that's in the agave plant, which we then need to convert into fermentable sugars. They take so long to grow, and then six kilograms of agave is required to make one liter of tequila. Step two is the cooking of the agave. The piñas are cooked in traditional brick ovens or stainless steel autoclaves. This converts the complex carbohydrates or starches into fermentable sugars. There are many different opinions on what is better, the brick oven or the autoclave. Personally for me, I like tequilas that are cooked in traditional brick ovens. Step number three, the extraction. Once cooked, the piñas are taken to a milling area for sugar extraction. The cooked piñas are crushed to remove the agua miel, which is the agave juice, to be fermented. The traditional way is to use a giant tahona wheel, which is normally operated by mules or tractors, and they crush the agave in a circular pit. Many modern producers use roller mills or mechanical crushers, and this is to separate the fibers from the juices. Once they are crushed, they are washed with water to remove further juices. Step number four, fermentation. During the fermentation process, the agua miel is converted into alcohol. This is normally done in large wooden vats or stainless steel tanks. Yeast may be added, but traditionally they would use the yeast that would grow on the leaves of the agave plant. Fermentation takes between seven to 12 days, depending on the method used. What is fermentation? How does it work? To get a little bit geeky for you, the best way that I like to explain it is picture Pac-Man in the game. Pac-Man is yeast that is coming along and eating those little balls. Those little balls is the agua mel or the sugar. As Pac-Man comes along and eats those, what it does is it creates CO2, so it lets off some gas and starts to bubble. It also produces heat. So a lot of times these fermentation tanks are bubbling away and hot, even though there is no heat added to the bottom of them. And then what it does as well is it converts that sugar into an alcohol. And from there you have really what's called pulque. Step five, distillation. So now we have this tequila wine, or pulque as it's known. It isn't high in alcohol content, but we need to now really make it a lot higher proof. And the way that we do that is the next step, which is called distillation. The pulque is added to copper or stainless steel pot stills. I personally prefer something that's made in a copper pot still because it adds a lot more flavor to the spirit. And the majority are distilled twice. The first distillation is called destrozamiento. This translates to smashing. This yields a liquid alcohol of about 20% and it's called ordinario and it also has a slightly milky color. The second distillation is called the rectification, and this produces a spirit at around 55% ABV. This is now what you would call silver or blanco tequila. If we were making silver or blanco tequilas, it would be rested for a little bit in a stainless steel tank, reduced down to the ABV that you're after with some water, and then bottled. If we're making a reposado, an añejo, or an extra añejo, the next step that we do is step number six, aging. Most tequilas are aged in French or American oak that have previously been used to age bourbon. Reposados are normally aged or rested anywhere from two to 12 months. Añejos are aged from one to three years and extra añejos three years and over. Because of the climate in Mexico and the temperature fluctuations, you don't have to age a tequila as much as you would something like a Scotch whiskey. Step number seven, bottling. Like champagne or cognac, tequila also has an appellation of origin status. This limits production to five states of Mexico. Guanajuato, Jalisco, 
Michoacan, Nayarit, and Tamaulipas. It must also be made from 100% Blue Weber agave. Another rule is it must bear on the bottle Echo in Mexico or Made in Mexico. And every bottle of tequila should have a four digit code, which is a NOM number, where you can look up its production methods and where it's made. Now, there are big arguments between tequila drinkers on different types of methods. Some like Tahona wheels, some like roller mills, some like autoclave, brick ovens, and so forth. Personally, I love the traditional methods. However, the way I see it is as long as people are drinking good, proper tequila that aren't mixed those, it's awesome for the tequila industry. So guys, cheers, please like, subscribe, watch the next video that's here on the link coming up, and we'll see you again soon on Let's Talk Drinks.